Hello. Welcome. Hello, I'm Eric Faldi. You are watching the Fargo 3D Printing Show. This is episode four of season, we're calling it season three. It doesn't really matter. Um, we just decided that because we changed the format a little bit. I'm here with my co-host. Marcus Moldashel. And as a, yeah, I'll always let you say the last name. Yep. It's just, it's hard. Um, I just realized Eminem. Like, uh, yeah, so it's, that's uh, like, you, you have to think of another rap MCM name. MCM is MCM. my MCM. Oh, okay. My sister is MMM. MMM. Ugh. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> MCM. Yeah, a little alliteration in your family. Yeah, yeah. Uh, today, I think I teased it last time, we're going to talk about cookie cutters and kind of food safety things. I didn't do a whole lot of research on food safety and toxicity stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, sanitary, whatever, making things sanitary, but um, we'll talk about that a little bit toward the end of the podcast, maybe just after I kind of start off with things. So we had a customer come in through uh, the support on Fargo3dprinting.com. They wanted to do cookie cutters with their logo. It's a group called Impact Dakota. They're out of Bismarck, North Dakota, and they have offices here. But they had a logo. It's pretty much an exclamation point with the shape of North Dakota at the bottom. So... This, I think, was a later version, but I had some failures, so I could have just designed it and it would have probably worked okay, but I wanted to do my due diligence, so I decided I'm going to make some of my own, too. Um, so I think I went through two or three iterations with theirs. It didn't take long to design, but mostly I design, go home, we try to make cookies. Uh, don't buy off-the-shelf, like, Pillsbury stuff unless it's a non-rising dough. You need something that doesn't have a rising agent in it. I'm not a big cooking guy, so I'm using the wrong terms, I'm sure, but... Uh, <laughs> a leavening agent. Yeah, there yeah, yeah, you go. Um, you want something that's un unleavened. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so we found this, uh, we found a recipe that I can share if you want. Otherwise, I can probably just have it flash on the screen here. But uh, you can probably buy something like uh, shortening bread or whatever, like something, something like that. Gingerbread cookies, they shouldn't rise too much. But um, so I, th I went through a few different iterations. I found a really good model that I kind of took a few measurements from. So it's Cartman Cookie Cutter by Proto Nick. Uh, P-R-O-T-O-N-I-K. It's on Thingiverse. Thingiverse thing 905066. So I'll put that link in the bo the, the uh, comments down below. But I looked and his, like the bottom of the cutting part and the part where the indents come in, it was three millimeters, which on some cookies, depending on how thin you want to go, you might want to, you might want to go like two millimeters or something. Right. It just depends. But uh, we used a dough that it was kind of sticky and it had to be pretty cold. So we ended yeah. up using, uh, I think it was textile paper. Yeah. I, th I forget. Like my mom, my mom has, paper. my mom helped me a lot with this. Wax paper, like textile yeah. paper, would probably do it. Parchment paper. Parchment, so parchment paper. Use. That's probably what it is. I'm yeah, it's like wrong, the waxy but, side uh, stuff. Yeah, something like that where it's not going to stick. And we also yeah. use dowels, just something you can get at an art store that's uh, just a rod that's a uh, uniform diameter. So we, I tried uh, eighth inch, three sixteenths, and quarter inch. I found that three sixteenths was pretty good. Is that uh, for rolling it out or what? Yeah, it's because you put the dowels. It's pretty much like how people put like rings on. Oh, the, so to get a uniform height yeah, when you're yeah. using the rolling pin. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't specify that very well. Yeah, but, I was like, well, uh, you, you use dowels. Rolling dowels, pin. or you could okay. use. Yeah, we. It would be really like, hard to roll that with. Uh, okay. With uh, with dowels. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, use the dowels for a uh, uniform height. Yeah, yeah. And they're like a dollar for four feet of it, so right. it's no problem. I just went to Lowe's, which is yep. if you're not sure what Lowe's is, it's just like. Any Home Depot. Yeah, Home, Home Depot, something store. something like that. You can get it anywhere. You can probably get it at an art store. But uh, yeah, my mom helped me a lot because I'm not handy in the kitchen. And I figured it'd be like a fun, uh, you know, mother-son kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, I did make her a cookie cutter eventually. So I'll talk about there that in go. a minute. Uh, initially, I, I mean, this, this is APLA from 3D Fuel. This one, you can probably see. Um, that one we put on a hot pan and That's it ended up... Thing. It ended up, it's probably not going to focus see. too well. No, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll get a shot of that. But it, uh, it did end up melting a little bit on the edge. So it, it, oh. it annealed um, yeah, yeah. in place, and it does not look good. It still works as a cookie cutter, but... Yeah. Um, but we got some pretty nice details out of that uh, mold, and I think they ended up getting like six of them in orange, which nice. I like that. So. Cool. Um, yeah, I had tried to do this a while back. Uh, it's kind of a family tradition. Um, in my family around Christmas, we always make these sugar cookies... We were making them and my mom uh, was like, oh, why can't we just print out cookie cutters? And I was like, great idea. So I went online on Thingiverse and I found one that was a dachshund because we have a dachshund. It's our dog and then whatever made a bunch. So that was, oh God, that's oh, when I was still in high school. So over a, a year ago, ago, a year and a half or you know, probably two years yeah, ago. Yeah, about there. 
But yeah, we're coming up on Christmas. Yeah, probably two years ago. Yeah, so I'd say cookie cutters, 3D printing, very viable option. I wouldn't yeah. say it's a long-term option. Um, we can maybe start talking a little bit about food safety. Right. Um, so what we just all in general with 3D printing, mostly with FDM, you're going to have just all those little Nooks. little beads of plastic next to each other. And it is like a technical term, but like the cleavage, like where the things meet. It's right. like you use that in science too. It's right. just like... It's that really small part in there. You can't really clean it well on these. And if you wanted to heat it up enough, it's going to start uh, turning right. to its glass state yeah. or just completely like turn to goop. Right. So honestly, it's a three D print. What is this like? That was nothing in plastic. Yeah, I mean, just even if even turn if, off another one every time you want. Even to if do you it. went through a service bureau, this would probably be. Right. And depending on how many you did, it'd be maybe well, a ten dollar right. or five dollar part. I mean, you yeah. probably want to do a few at a time, uh, which right. I think I was doing two or three at a time. I mean, if you want something custom, it's the way to go. Yeah. So, I mean, if you want to do a bunch of cookies at once, I'd say go for it. Uh, right. Don't don't try to keep these for later. <laughs> I would. So I'll probably wash no. my hands after touching these. Like we did, no. you know, we we wash them with soap a little bit and kind of scrub them. But right. Um, so this was one that I did for myself because I hadn't had. I wanted to post on social media about it as I was doing it, and I didn't have clearance yet to post their pictures. So I'm, you know, I try to do a good job with the customer with that. So I did the angry Facebook emoji which I think is a really funny one. Um, the wow one is also a good option, but this one was easy. I was in a hurry. I wanted to make a quick model. Um, I found that uh, 0.8 millimeters is good for the walls because that's right. going to be two extrusions width. Uh, two, right. Yeah, two extrusion widths. Uh, and then, yeah, everything else, like this stuff on the back, you kind of just have to play with. Like if you want to have it more sturdy, you could probably just have that thicker. So mm -hmm. This one did end up... It helped a little bit because we did thinner cookies and I could kind of push it down in. Oh, to um, like flex yeah. it out. Yeah, yeah because least. otherwise this was not going to okay. this was not going to cut into a uh, eighth inch cookie. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it worked out nicely that way. I'm going to share that on fa uh, not on Facebook on Thingiverse at some point uh, mm -hmm. because I figure like this was on work hours, so right. <laughs> I'll put it up. Uh, I did make another version, which was oh, it's right here. It was a. Uh, so this was a three inch version or, you know, 75 millimeters. This was a 50 millimeter version, which I had to change things a little bit. We did this on our SLA printer, the Form 2, and this was in the high temp material, which I figured, hey, the one problem is that it's not going to be food safe. Um, right. And then I talked to, actually talked at uh, MDNM, the uh, medical and manufacturing trade show in Minneapolis. Yep. I talked to Form Labs and I was telling them what I wanted to do. They said, it's not food safe. It's not food safe. It's not food safe. <laughs> yep. They didn't say it three times, but I said that just for, for uh, yeah. effect. Um, you can make it sanitary. You can make it clean. But um, the particles, the particulates, I don't know. There's stuff in here. Yeah, you got to live a little bit. There's <laughs> stuff in here that uh, is not good for ingestion. Um, just for this purpose, I actually have, uh, I took a picture of the side of the label, and I'm just going to read it quickly. Um, pretty much, yeah, there's stuff like, hey, storing instructions, caution, do not mix materials, you might get uh, un undesired results. Contains a mixture of methoacrylated monomers, meth methacryl, oh boy, these are hard words. Is this the label uh, off the... Yeah, resin? it's on the side of the cartridge. Methoacrylated yeah, yeah. oligomers, I don't know how to pronounce any oh, of these words, boy. and then photo initiators, which I don't know how... Sounds like a lot are, of not fun um, stuff. Hazards. If on skin, product may cause skin irritation or an allergic skin reaction. If in the eyes, product may cause serious eye damage. If inhaled, product may cause respiratory irritation or allergy, asthma symptoms, or breathing difficulties in cases of long-term exposure. Toxic to aquatic life with long-lasting effects. <laughs> aquatic <laughs> life. So yeah, uh, avoid breathing gas slash mist slash vapors slash spray. Wash skin thoroughly after handling. Uh, contaminated work clothing should not be allowed out of the workplace. Wear protective gloves, protective clothing. I, I mean, I, I could go on. Pretty right. much, don't get it in your eyes, it'll hurt. Um, keep so rinsing. It goes really into depth. Uh, yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah, collect spillage. Product is home for aquatic life. Do not put in the drain. Dispose of uh, appropriately, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and then it has uh, a little bit more. Keep out of reach of children. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, signal word, danger. That's the one I really liked. Yeah. It's just like next to all the angry exclamation points. But yeah, it's uh, not clean, safe stuff to work with. So what they pretty much told me was like, if you use it as a cookie cutter, it should probably be okay. Don't cook this with food. Like don't try to make like a bowl out of this and put it in the oh, oven. That yeah. was something where you're going to get leaching and it would yep. poison you <laughs> in yeah. your food. Um, so 
Yeah, it's uh, you can make it sanitary. We actually I wanted to put it in the washing machine and then the bo the uh, and then boil it in a, like a rolling boil. We decided to just skip the washing machine, uh, or I'm sorry, yeah. dishwasher. Uh, so we just put it in a boiling pot, and it actually it held up fine. Um, but it's kind of like with uh, a mouth guard where it is like kind of it's got a little bit of play. Give to it. Yeah. yeah. So it actually. You can probably, I have some video of that, but it has a little dent in there. Oh yeah. We probably should have let it cool off before we tried to pick it up with the That's tongs probably. again. So it actually has a little bit of a flat spot. Mm -hmm. And it looks like my solo camera froze up on me. Yeah. Um, we'll just look over here then. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, you can boil it. It worked and it seems like it's still okay. Um, I sanded it with like a pretty low grit. So it doesn't look fantastic, but I didn't really care too much about that. It looks fine. Yeah, I mean, it looks, it it's works. It's a cookie. So I would, I would feel safe using this again. Um, I'd definitely clean it again before I used it, but we boiled it, and the only thing that happened was it warped a little bit. And I think we could have avoided that if we would have just left it. Right. So um, I'm trying to think what else. Um, so that I'll put that version up as well. Um, I think we printed it at pretty standard stuff. Actually, I had a little bit of stuff about the high temp stuff that I thought was kind of interesting. So this was kind of just an R&D project because we're going to start using high temp stuff in some of our uh, products, just high yep. temperature things. So if you have like a 2X, maybe you'll see something uh, eventually. Right. Um, but I was reading online, it has a heat deflection temperature of 289, which is about five, it's over 500. I forget what that was exactly. So that's why I didn't feel bad boiling it. Right. Um, boiling water is 100 C, right? That's yes. 212 yep, yep. Fahrenheit. Yep, you got it. Yeah. Um, so it says it's recommended for molding um, with desktop injection molding, so nothing with a super high pressure. Thermoforming, uh, mm -hmm. end use parts in high temperature applications, vulcanization, and electronics encapsulation. Not recommended for injection molding with industrial equipment. <laughs> parts that will be under load or snap fits or flexible parts. So I think the fact that it was a really thin wall also kind of hurt its integrity right. when we boiled it. Um, but yeah, it's, um, mm -hmm. it's $150 a liter, so that's why I made this one smaller, because it's just... It's, you know, it's about $50 more. I mean, it's usually 100 a liter for the other stuff, but this one's kind of a fancier one. Um, it's fancy. Hey, so the silicone gets, it gets put under a little bit more stress using this because I think it needs a higher laser frequency or it just, it's stronger. And that's the silicone on the tank. Right? Yeah, on the, um, yeah, on the tank where the resin sits. Right. Uh, and then the part where the squeegee goes. Yeah. Um, but it pretty much said that you will go through the the silicone a little bit faster, so make sure that you do don't do huge parts, and make sure that it doesn't auto rotation, like it kind of moves the parts around when it's doing that on the uh, the slicer. So that's really yeah. nice. You could probably turn that off, but we just leave it on because it's helpful. That's a good thing, I guess. I guess it remembers where you've put stuff, so you don't just have like one spot that has like a a burn mark in it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's it, had, it took a lot more supports than normal SLA mm -hmm. prints that I've seen. So it was actually I have pictures of that. It was a pain in the ass to clean. Yeah. Uh, all the supports off, especially since some of them are a little bit, I, I had to get like deeper in there and it was just, it was, yeah. uh, it's it's not perfect. Like this is probably not like, uh, I forget what you call that. Uh, it's not coming. Oh. Um, it's it's probably got some some holes and stuff in it, like where it could have, oh. it could have uh, some contamination. Watertight. Um, it, not a void, it's something like that. All right. <laughs> it's not coming. Yeah, yeah, but I guess it, it might have some some holes and stuff right. in it or cracks. Should we talk about Rit? Yes. Um, oh, Rit. Sorry, I rambled. I also made a cookie cutter for my mom that had a flying pig on it. Um, the design hmm. was... Uh, I, I ripped off the design from Pigs with Wings. They're on Redbubble. Um, this didn't work especially well. No, I forgot that probably froze up. Oh, yeah. um, but it's too small, so I might put this one up, but it's not, uh, right. not going to be very functional. I got one cookie out of it, and we had to like do Fair some enough. stuff to make it work. Uh, we had an intern... Just looking, see what we have. We had yeah, an intern over the summer. His name was Rit. Uh, don't, I Rit, don't Rit B. Know how to begin. Even to the, the that. first, the first name was also shortened. He's uh, his yeah. parents are Indian, so the name is a little, little Longer. lengthy. But he helped us with some reverse engineering and mm -hmm. kind of just what what with uh, he was looking at printer yeah. parts, trying to figure out. Um, yeah, it's um, actually something we're working on still. We're almost done with it. Right. So if you guys see like all these bolt things right here behind me. Those are all the screws and nuts and bolts for uh, mono price printers, like the mono price select and uh, so the V2 and the mini. Rit uh, had found all those and got those all sourced out and stuff. Yeah, so pretty and much if there's a screw for that printer that you need, we're going right. to try to make it so you can just quickly and easily find it. Right. Uh, and Rit uh, helped out with that. I think we did have some conversion issues because we went from like 
you know, yeah, was, metric it, and standard, but we, we got a good start anyway. So yeah. uh, he's at Carnegie Mellon, and I think he told you about... Uh, uh, Oh. He told you about Stratasys. They have uh, yeah. something going on this summer. Well, he had told me about uh, Form Labs. They had some. Oh, he's a Form Labs. I was thinking yeah, Stratasys. Yeah, but then, no, I had also, um, I just looked for Stratasys and okay. I applied for an internship there this summer. And hopefully, I hear a call back from them. Tomorrow's the last day Ooh, they're calling. Okay. So I haven't heard. It was supposed to be all week this week, but if I haven't. You don't, heard if you don't see Marcus this summer, that's why. Yeah. But uh, otherwise, um, the reason we brought up Rit is that he, <laughs> we have. One of our part-timers back here eating the cookies that I brought. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess we could probably crack into those too. Yeah. Uh, but Rit had an idea, and I don't remember what he called it, but he was trying to make an Indian dessert called uh, Teal Pita. Mm-hmm. And I looked this up because I have no idea how to spell it. It's uh, T-I-L space P-I-T-H-A. It kind of looks like a cannoli, um, but it's using this dry rice powder that you put on the stove or on top of a hot, a hot pan uh, mm-hmm. or hot plate. And then you kind of make it into a round thing, and you roll it over. You put sweet sesame seeds in it, yeah. or sesame powder paste. I forget. Was, there's a bunch of different like uh, herbs or whatever you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, but it was actually. I thought it was pretty tasty. Yeah, it, the it, texture was a little off, but I think we weren't making it right. Yeah, he had said it wasn't quite how it was supposed to be, but yeah, it, it, it definitely had uh, had stuff going for it. <laughs> but <laughs> that's that's the nice way of him saying that he did not. Uh, it, it wasn't he, the best. He didn't love it. But. The filling was really good though. There I thought like I thought it was pretty stuff. good overall. We tried making some that were a little bit more soupy, kind of like a pancake texture, but it is yeah. supposed to be like dry if you look it up. Yeah. Um, but he tried to make a thing that would deposit a nice round mm-hmm. uh, layer of this, and then have a thing to flatten it out. Uh, there are yeah. some issues with it. Um, we'll have some footage of that, but yeah. it, we didn't quite get it to work. But it was a fun project anyway, and I mm-hmm. do appreciate Rit kind of bringing in uh, his his culture and kind of showing and sharing yeah, with us. So that was cool. Yeah, we we got some food out of it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'll, I'll make sure that he sees this and and mm-hmm. uh, yeah, maybe he'll come back. I know his parents are from here, but Carnegie oh, yeah. Mellon's a little little ways away from it's here. John. This is the one I made. It's uh, doesn't look good, but. <laughs> it's all right. It's a little dry. Then, then finish it. it is, I didn't put enough dessert stuff on. Yeah. It was, it needs it more sugar. Like rice. <laughs> all right, there we go. Yeah. That's uh, the Tio Pizza flatten flattener project. I don't know. If, I don't. I, I don't think we can call this one a success, but it was fun anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if we have any ideas right. for, for next week, but uh, there's always yeah. stuff going on. A lot of new printers out. Mm-hmm. Um, we're always trying to keep you updated on that. And we do have some trade shows coming up, like, of course, in January, CES is coming up. I think it's going to be a pretty light crew. I think it might be just yeah. Jake and myself, but uh, we'll keep our eyes open because I know the 3D printing market is not shrinking, but the amount of companies that are going to CES is definitely getting right. consolidated. There's a lot less new companies, I would say. Yeah, I or people that are realizing people are established oh, I'm not getting what I need out of CES, or those printer companies are either going under right. or getting bought up whatever so yeah. uh that's all i have for this week so cookie yeah. cutters let's let's take a bite oh boy so hopefully this isn't hopefully like the, the I'm rise get the rise uh particle poison so this this stuff is pretty crumbly all right very good <laughs> they're sugar cookies so we'll there's see them. you next time thank you for watching and uh make sure you subscribe i think there's like a bell thing people always talk about on yeah, youtube the notification now bell. we're not quite popular enough for it to matter yeah, well, still but hit it. If you want to hit the bell, you'll see us for sure. Mm-hmm. So see you next time. See you guys. <laughs> Pretty much what teal pita is, is it's made from rice flour, uh, sesame seeds, and sugar. It's kind of like a crepe that has, uh, that, that's kind of dry, it's not liquid. And then once it kind of gets hot enough, um, you can put the filling inside. And the filling has uh, both uh, black sesame seeds and jaggery. Uh, but you can also substitute sugar into that. And then you just kind of roll it up into like a crepe shape and then uh, you just eat it while it's hot.